I'm Professor Peter Collins. I'm a professor of uh, clinical cardiology at uh, Imperial College and the Royal Brompton and Harefield NHS Trust. And I've been speaking on uh, postmenopausal women and microvascular angina. The main challenges in HRT are really to uh, identify patients who you feel will benefit from it. And the majority of patients that we treat in our, in our clinic have menopausal symptoms. Uh, we know that postmenopausal symptoms such as hot flushes, uh, tiredness, irritability, vaginal dryness are all improved significantly with hormone therapy. And basically, if patients have cardiovascular disease or have angina um, with those symptoms, then uh, those are the patients that we feel may benefit from the addition of hormone therapy. And the key with treating these patients is really to identify the lowest dose that, is a, is, uh, that will control the symptoms uh, and, and then, if needed, to up-titrate the dose uh, of the hormone. Now, one of the issues with hormone therapy is that um, there are different estrogens, there are different progestins, there are different routes of administration, there are different doses. So, uh, I'm not suggesting that cardiologists should treat women um, with, uh, with hormone therapy for, um, for these postmenopausal symptoms. But it may be that if these women are identified as having the symptoms, then um, a gynecologist can be asked for help uh, and an opinion as to what forms of hormones may be applicable in those women and, and what doses and what routes of administration. In our clinic, we favour um, the naturally occurring oestrogen, which is 17-beta oestradiol, and transdermal um, therapy will then avoid first pass uh, for the first liver, liver pass and that actually we think is more cardiovascularly favourable than giving oral uh, HRT. There is a slight increase of deep venous thrombosis risk in women who take hormone therapy uh, and that's about three, an increase of three women per 10,000 women treated for a year. So it's a very, very small increase in risk, um, but that is the, the only established risk in younger women uh, with regard uh, to, to HRT. It very much depends on the, um, the, uh, the skills of the, um, of the cardiovascular physician. If the cardiovascular physician is, is uh, um, confident and uh, knows enough about the, uh, the area to to, to be able to prescribe, then you know, that, that would be uh, acceptable. But we, we really recommend that if that's not the case, that they get the help of um, either an endocrinologist or a gynecologist. And um, we, we promote a sort of a team effort so that uh, um, these patients can be duly managed by the endocrinologist, gynecologist and the cardiovascular physician. Yeah, the risks of treatment, as I've already explained, are, are, are a slight increase in deep venous thrombosis risk. Uh, and again, that's about three per 10,000 women treated for a year. So it's a very small risk, but it's a, it's a real risk. Um, and women are often accepting of that uh, risk because of the beneficial effects on the menopausal symptoms uh, that they get. Menopausal symptoms can be very bad and, and really can affect um, the general well-being of, of the woman quite badly. Um, and therefore that sort of morbidity is, is, is addressed by the HRT and they often say, well, if there is a small risk, I'm prepared to accept that risk for the benefit that I'm getting uh, with regard to the management of the, um, of the symptoms.